Too long have we been waiting for one another to begin. The time for waiting is past. The hour of God has struck. War is declared. In God's holy name, let us arise and build. The God of heaven, he will fight for us, as we for him. We will not build on the sand, but on the bedrock of the sayings of Christ, and the gates and minions of hell shall not prevail against us. Should such men as we fear, before the whole world, yes, before the sleepless, lukewarm, faithless, namby-pamby Christian world, we will dare to trust our God. We will venture our all for Him. We will live and we will die for Him. And we will do it with His joy unspeakable, singing aloud in our hearts. We will a thousand times sooner die trusting only in our God than live trusting in man. And when we come to this position, the battle is already won, and the end of the glorious campaign in sight. We will have the real holiness of God, not the sickly stuff of talk and dainty words and pretty thoughts. We will have a masculine holiness, one of daring faith and works for Jesus Christ. Christ's call is to feed the hungry, not the full. To save the lost, not the stiff-necked. Not to call the scoffers, but sinners to repentance. Not to build and furnish comfortable chapels, churches, and cathedrals at home in which to rock Christian professors to sleep by means of clever essays, stereotyped prayers, and artistic musical performances. But to raise living churches of souls among the destitute. To capture men from the devil's clutches and snatch them away from the very jaws of hell. To enlist and train them for Jesus, and to make them into an almighty army of God. But this can only be accomplished by a red-hot, unconventional, unfettered Holy Ghost religion, where neither church nor state, neither man nor traditions are worshipped or preached, but only Christ and Him crucified. Not to confess Christ by fancy collars, church steeples, or richly embroidered altar cloths, but by reckless sacrifice and heroism in the foremost trenches.